Jamar, have you ever come close to dying? Yes, a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, I've been shot at a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, I've been cut up a couple of times. You mean cut up with a knife? Yeah, crazy. What, women. what happened? Crazy women. women Cra crazy. You're fighting over women, or some woman attacked you? Woman attacked me. <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. Uh, yeah, I'm standing here today. I can't complain too much. So, uh, Jamar, you think there's an afterlife? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's somewhere that we gotta go. We come from somewhere, so we gotta go back somewhere. So where'd you come from? I, I, God made us, so we gotta go back and be with him one day. Yeah. Okay. Are you, do you think God is happy with you as a person, or is he mad at you? I mean, I think he's happy with me, you know, because everything I've been through, I done took from it and learned from it, you know, and, and then, then pass the knowledge on to people that can help them. So, you think you're a good person? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, we all, we all good with our, if we embrace our flaws. So how many lies have you told in your life? Lies? Um, used to be an advocate liar. My grandma told me I was a habitual liar. <laughs> you ever stolen something? No. I thought you'd stop lying. See? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I never took nothing that didn't belong to me, though. Uh, have you ever used God's name in vain? Uh... Yeah, okay. Uh, Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? I, I commit this sin every day. I'm sorry. Have you had sex out of marriage? Uh, I, I'm sorry again, God. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I appreciate your honesty, Jamal. So you're, you're telling me that you're a lying, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart. And you <laughs> You've got to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by the Ten Commandments, or looked at four of them, will he be innocent or guilty? Well, you know, I'm going to be um, guilty for what I've committed. But, you know, we, we serve a, a forgiving God. Let me tell you what the God of the Bible says. He says, I'll by no means clear the guilty. He says, all liars have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer, no fornicator will inherit God's kingdom. So if all your sins come out on Judgment Day, you're going to be guilty and you're going to be in big trouble. Can you see that? I mean, yeah, I can see it. I mean, I, I know I did for what I did, but... So how can you justify yourself? What comes after the but? I can't, there's no justification for what you do wrong. God provided a savior. 2,000 years ago, God became a human being, Jesus of Nazareth, specifically to die on the cross. Now, we, most of us know that, but we don't realize this. You and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments, called the Moral Law. Jesus came and paid the fine. Have you been in court? I've been in court before. You'll know that if you've got a fine and someone else pays it, the judge can let you go. He can say, oh, Jamal's guilty, but the fine's paid. Uh, get him out of here. Well, when Jesus was on the cross, he cried out, it is finished, just before he died. In other words, the debt has been paid. We broke the law. He paid the fine. That means God can legally dismiss our case. We can walk out of the courtroom. Our sins can be forgiven. Our crimes against God's law can be forgiven all because of a suffering, death, and resurrection. What you have to do is repent, yes, and trust alone in Jesus. See, if you're trusting in your goodness, you're like a man who jumps out of a plane at 10,000 feet and flaps his arms. He's trying to save himself. Best trust the parachute. Give up trying to save yourself. Don't say I'm a good person and trust the parachute. Trust the Savior. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. In other words, you can be justified, made right with God, just through simple childlike trust. Like we trust a pilot when you fly in a plane, or you trust a doctor when he gives you pills. We exercise faith every day, but trust in God is the way to find everlasting life. Does this make sense? It makes sense. So, Jamar, if you were to die today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell. There are two things you have to do to be saved. You must repent and trust alone in Jesus. When are you going to do that? I mean, I, I, I walk with him every day, but... When did you last last after women? Uh, last night. <laughs> So, you know, Jamal, I, I would like you to tighten up your straps. I mean, this is your eternity. Just say, boy, I've been slack. I haven't been feeding on God's word. I haven't been living in holiness. I haven't been bringing forth fruit worthy of repentance. That means this sh your life should reflect what you believe. And there are a lot of people around who say, yeah, I believe in God. I pray every night. Well, most of America prays every night. And most of it, well, we all believe, even atheists believe, because God's given inner light to every man. But God wants your obedience as proof that you love him, that you've really repented and uh, you're trusting in Christ. So remember the words of Jesus, Matthew 7, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, 
We did many wonderful things in your name. And he'll say, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. I never knew you. In other words, you said you knew me, but you continue to lie and steal and blaspheme and lust. And so genuine repentance is a perpetual turning from sin. So is this giving you food for thought today? I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Oh, oh, oh.